back when Ubuntu first came out, it was shipping GNOME. And nowadays, it is still shipping GNOME. But it hasn't been the case the entire life cycle of Ubuntu. There was that period in the middle where it was using something different. Between 11.04 and 17.04, instead, it was using the Unity desktop. And even though Unity has kind of, you know, lost its spotlight, it's no longer the main thing that people see when they use Linux, it still has its fans, albeit likely far fewer than back then. And those who still do exist, it is now your time to enter the spotlight again. Because Ubuntu Unity is applying to become an official Ubuntu flavor, alongside things like Kubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu Budgie, Ubuntu Kylan, and things like this. While not being the main thing that Ubuntu is being shipped with, these are officially endorsed ways of using your Ubuntu system. And it's not like Canonical has suddenly changed their mind about Unity and are suddenly going to start maintaining it themselves again. Instead, what is happening is over the past couple of years, various third parties have been working on the project. In particular, one of those being, I'm going to put your name, I apologize for this, Rujpa Saraswat, who was the developer of what previously was a separate distro, Ubuntu Unity. This basically tries to bring Unity into a modern Ubuntu desktop experience. So let's have a read of the email he sent. Hi. I'm Rudra Saraswat, the developer of Ubuntu Unity. We are interested in applying for official flavor status after having maintained and developed Ubuntu Unity and Unity 7 over the past two years. We've had six releases so far, including two LTS releases. And we'll have a read of this proposal in just a moment. We also recently released Unity 7.6, the latest version of Unity 7, which includes a number of new features and a revamped UI. We've also been collaborating with UV Ports. This is the main group that's been maintaining Unity over the past couple of years and are interested in maintaining a Lemiri variant of Ubuntu Unity with the release of the 24.04 LTS, by which time most of the Lemiri slash Unity 8 packages should be present in Ubuntu. We have a number of people on board, including Kershid Alam, I probably butchered that as well, who's been maintaining Unity 7 really well all these years. There's also Mike, who's also an Ubuntu member, Tobio, also involved with the Lemiri team, and Alan Cavallo, our designer. Mukhtadir from the Yaru team had added support for Unity 7 to Yaru and is still involved in the team. You may know him from the Yaru Accent Colors project, which was implemented in Unity 22.04. We also later added support for Accent Colors in Unity 7.6. Now, as for this proposal, most of it is what seems to be fairly standard stuff. It's not doing anything really, anything that crazy, which isn't a bad thing. It's trying to be a fairly standard flavor. For a standard non-LTS release like 22.10 is going to be, it's going to have a nine-month support period like every other Ubuntu product already has. They're going to maintain the Unity desktop. If there are bugs or features that need to be added, then they're going to do so. And a lot of the packages they use on the Unity desktop, like say the GNOME terminal, GNOME calendar, GNOME software, and various other things like Xorg are already maintained and available in the Ubuntu repos. They plan to address issues as they arise. They plan to work with other developers, not just developers working on Unity, but if you know something comes up that breaks the GNOME terminal, for example, they're going to work with those developers to get those things addressed as well. And if anything comes up specifically related to the Unity project, they also have their own communication channels, things like a Telegram, Discord, Twitter, and a subreddit. And they've also met the criteria to become a flavor. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be applying, but I guess this needs to be here to make sure people aren't trying to troll them. Their leading members have signed the Ubuntu Code of Conduct. They have one or more developers with upload rights, as in upload rights to go and add packages into the Ubuntu repos. Their flavor lead is identified, that being Rudra, and he's been responsive through a six-month cycle, as in he's been working on things, he's been active working on this distro, he's been working on it actively for over two years now. The flavor QA lead, which may be a different person from the flavor lead, is identified to coordinate testing of image at milestones during release. Mike is the QA lead. They've followed the milestones and release processes of Ubuntu to make sure they align with what a flavor needs to be doing. 
We've been following the release schedule since 20.04, and they've done their best effort support from a flavor community for security updates and high priority bug fixes for the default nine month support period. We release updates frequently, and this has been detailed in the above section. And the release schedule is nothing fancy either. It's literally a copy paste of the standard Kinetic Kudu release schedule, which once again, this is not a bad thing. They are doing everything by the books, and this is the easiest way to do it. So you may be wondering how the proposal and application went. Well, it went mostly smoothly, only with a couple of things that needed to be addressed. So in Steve Langisek's response, he says you listed an MOTU, but didn't say who it actually is. So an MOTU is a master of the universe, someone who is a package maintainer in the universe repo. Also, they listed the desktop components, which is very important to do, but they didn't actually list the Ubuntu Unity meta package, the package that would include everything in the Unity desktop. They also weren't using Git for all of the package components. Instead, for some of the things, they were using Bazaar. I don't know why. That's just what they were using. And while this is not explicitly in the rules that you can't go and use this, he didn't exactly want to deal with it, so he just asked them to go and move it over. Also, they initially listed VLC on their proposal wiki page. So the packages that are listed on this wiki page are packages that they need to go and add themselves or packages that they need direct control over. But VLC doesn't really fit into that category. It is being used by various other desktops, so they shouldn't really have ownership rights over it. That was also a bit of a mistake they had. And none of these things were really that big of a deal, so Rudra went and addressed all of them, and Steve had this to say. Thanks again for your constructive engagement in pursuing official flavor status. I am satisfied that your team has met the requirements for inclusion as a daily flavor and in voting plus one for Ubuntu Unity moving forward with daily builds. Now if you're really deep in the Linux space, you may have heard of Rudra before. And this is not me being mean whatsoever. He is... A literal child. He is 12 years old. 12 years old, maintaining an official Ubuntu flavor. When I said he started working on this in 20.04, he was 10. What were you doing at 10 years old? Because for me, it was nothing productive. This kid is going to be incredibly important in the FOSS space as he gets older. Honestly, I wish him the best of luck going forward in whatever endeavors he's doing. Because if you're maintaining a distro at this age, I have no idea where you go from here, but whatever it is, it's probably going to be exciting. Now, one thing I've seen a lot of Linux outlets reporting is that Ubuntu Unity has now become an official flavor of Ubuntu. That's not exactly correct. So in 22.10, they will be recognized as an official flavor, contingent on the fact that they successfully meet the 22.10 beta milestone. If they don't meet that, they will not become an official flavor. They can reapply into the future, but they do need to meet that milestone first before they will be properly recognized. This is the reason why if you go to cdimage.ubuntu.com, you're going to notice that Ubuntu Unity is not included in this list. In case you don't know, this is basically where all of the Ubuntu releases are distributed from. Usually you're going to access this from a much nicer looking interface, but if you want to go and check out everything, check out Canary builds, things like that, this is the place you'll go and get them. So right now, if you want to go and test out the Unity desktop, the best way to do so is over on Ubuntu Unity. Technically, you can go and test it on regular Ubuntu. It is available in the Ubuntu repos, 7.5.1. However, this is a really old version of Unity. The version on Ubuntu Unity is 7.6, the first major release in about six or so years. So I don't use Ubuntu myself, and I don't really plan to either, but let me know what you think of this change being made available. Are you going to try out the Unity desktop? Did you like the Unity desktop when it was available? Or did you prefer GNOME? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, could you check out my Patreon, subscribe, and like bear pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.